Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. Super late to talk about this, but I wanted to talk about the banner units that are coming for the Grail Life. <laughs> I was busy with work, so I wasn't able to... Oh no, I wasn't busy with work. My dad was home, and I didn't want to bother... You know, a lot of things was going on in the weekend. Either way, what you need to know is that I now have time to talk about it. So that's going to be today's video. Since the two of these units are already released, feel free to tell me how you did. If you're going for Miss Crane or Mysterious Heroine X, that means you must really like them a lot. If you're choosing them over all the units that are coming post Lost Belt 6 and stuff like that. So feel free to tell me how you did. Uh, so let's get into it. So, Miss Crane and Mysterious Heroine X, we'll start with them because they're the ones that are currently up. In terms of the threes and the fours, I'll just bring it up now. Uh, Hassan of Serenity is always in every single banner. Nothing more to say here. She has an idol outfit, which is really nice, so that's reason enough to get her an MP5 or it's easy. It's literally free. You can do it for whatever. Nido, Nido Chris, the four star caster version, an extremely good. Uh, she has one extremely relevant skill, and it's this one. It's high speed divine words. It's charges own MP gauge, and at level eight, it's 102% MP charge. <laughs> you just use this, and you get. It's very easy to just like farm with her. And there you go. I've been using her for the Grail Live, actually. Just slapping on the CEs and using three AoE units and just kind of going, moving on until I can actually get the points cards and start grinding it like I would with a three, no, with like a, um, with a loop. Yeah, I'm not really looping. I'm just kind of giving them stuff and letting them go free. But yeah, Naito's very good for that. And plus, even if she doesn't for some reason kill with her damage, she has a high instant chance to just insta-kill the opponent. So, she's one of the very few units that I can think of that are insta-kill that are actually effective at insta-killing enemies. <laughs> so, she's very good. Definitely worth it. Probably not worth it only going for her, but she is nice having, and I have her NP2, and I would really like her to be NP5, but we deal with the cards that we have. So let's go into Miss Crane. I've said a little bit beforehand about Miss Crane, but I'll go over her again. Miss Crane, she's a caster. She has three arts, one quick, one buster. Her first skill, a lady's affection for garments, EX, grants party invincibility except for self for one turn, increases party crit star generation except for self for three turns, gains critical stars based on the number of costume owning allies except self, 100% rate up and costume owning star is 10, and that's cooldown is five. Her second skill is One Night Coat, charges on NP gauge, deals 2,000 damage without killing itself. 500% chance to draw attention to all other base party itself by 300% for 3 turns. And the MP charge up is 100% at level 10, which is really good. Third skill, 1,000 Years Gratitude, increases 1 ally's critical star absorption for 3 turns, increases their crit, star, uh, their crit damage for 3 turns, grants them instant kill immunity for 3 turns, and deals 1,000 damage without killing them themselves. The absorption up is 500%, the crit damage of 50%, and the cooldown is 5. Her passive skills are Territory Creation C, uh, C+, Octillier, and then Item Construction, Close A. And her third skill is an anti-ruler attack damage aptitude, which is increases on attack against the ruler class. And a rank EX noble phantasm is called the perfect beauty without flaw, the crane's grateful song of parting. It can only be used when there are 20 crit stars or more, increases first alley's attack except self for 3 turns, increases their MP damage by 30% for 3 turns, moves self to the last reserve slot, can only move if there are two or uh, two other party members left in the field. Notes, after moving, the servant who comes out is the leftmost one in the sub-slot. Unlike order change, the position change will reset the deck, so it becomes the first turn of a new command card cycle. The attack up is 20% at level 1 and 40% at level 5, and then the charge to the first ally's MP gauge except for the self. It has a charge rate up of 30% uh, at level 1, and if you get it all the way to overcharge 5, it is 50% MP up, which is pretty nice. And yeah, that's her. I think she's a very interesting support unit. I would really like her because I think she kind of, the things that she does I think are very interesting and kind of would be fun to deal with and try and think of a team around her. Especially because she has synergy with like any unit that has costume wearing, which is fun. And you kind of need at least two costume wearing team <laughs> members if you want to use her MP turn one with uh, 20 crit stars right away. Plus, the ability to kind of swap yourself out is extremely good. Um, I always like it because it makes for some fun team comps, for sure. 
Uh, the only problem is, is that she's a support unit that doesn't really buff, in a traditional sense, the attack up and the NP gauge stuff. Like, all her NP gauge things are related to here in the Noble Phantasm. A lot of, like, for example, Waver is a good one because he's a generic one. He gives 10%, 10%, 30% on the first skill. No, I think on the first skill it's 30%. It's been a very long time since so I've used Waver. But either way, one of the two skills gives 10%, the other one gives 10%, and the last one gives 30%, which is the crit damage one. Um, and that's traditionally how they kind of do their buffs. Like, his Noble Phantasm is something that is nice to have, but it's not the main crutch of the unit. She is the main crutch of the unit, is that entire Noble Phantasm. So if you're ever in a situation where you don't have the crit stars, you don't have anything else, you're going to be kind of shit out of luck. Um, thankfully, for the most part, you would kind of want to be using her on turn one and immediately kind of sending her to the back. So again, there's ways around it, but there's not. it's not like she's the most crazy broken unit that I've ever seen in the world. But she does sound kind of fun to mess with. And she also has some stuff here that is actually pretty good in very nice circumstances. Like granting insta-kill immunity is very good if there's ever a challenge quest where the enemy is in an insta-kill crazy frenzy, which is what I think of whenever I think of King Asan. The fixed bug version that the NA version got, which was 10 times harder than the one that JP got, because JP got a broken version of the King Asan fight that let you be able to stall him out using BB, who had instant kill immunity. But on NA, you didn't have that. He could just instantly kill anyone that he wanted. He would not target specifically BB, which there was a way to do that on the JV version of the game, but they fixed it for us over here. So in those very specific circumstances, <laughs> there's a way to use stuff like this, which I like it when a unit has it. So it's nice that she has the crit damage, which is the important thing, which is 50% crit. And then why not just grant this little extra thing in case it ever comes up. I think it doesn't really hurt anyone, and I think it's also fun for specific challenge quests when they're built around that to use a unit for that specific matter. But yeah, that's Miss Crane. I really would like her. Unfortunately, she is at the worst time possible. She doesn't come back very often, as my brother was telling me today. So if you're a big fan of Miss Crane, I say go for her and best of luck to you. But I think I'm going to hold off and just kind of wait and hope that NA brings her back much sooner than she does. they do on the JP version of the game. But we'll see. But yeah, that's Miss Crane. Next, Mysterious Heroine X Alter. Not the idle one. The idle one is free. This is the five star one. Active skills is the Black Bean Paste DX, which turns into the Chestnut Paste DX. And we'll be reading that one, which is an increased own healing received for three turns, recovers on HP, recovers on HP by a thousand every turn for three turns, increase the crit damage of quick cards and buster cards for one attack three turns. The heal rate is 50%, the heal is 2000, the crit. The, all the crit damage is 30% and her kit is also two quicks, one arts, one buster, two busters. So it's a good thing she has, she only has the single attack with the arts card. So yeah, not <laughs> it's not like she was, the, it hurts a little bit more for I think the quick and the bust because they both have two, but you know, she only has one arts card. And then her second skill is instinct C, which eventually gets um, upgraded and turned into Instantaneous Shadowless Blade C+, which is a much better version which increases on quick performance for 3 turns and then gains crit stars, 30% quick attack and 20 for 20 crit stars. Third skill is the Sovereign Invisible Hand C, reduces one ally's critical star absorption by the 100% for one turn, increases party's attack for 3 turns and it's a 20% attack up at level 10. Passive skills, Madness Enhancement C, Alter Reactor A, and then our pen skill is a bonus against the Assassin class. So if, no, increase on crit attack chance resistance against the Assassin class. And our Noble Phantasm, which goes from A plus to rank EX, is the Cross Caliber, the Black Dragon Twin Blade of Victory. It's a 9 hit quick Noble Phantasm that says increase own damage against enemies with a good alignment by 50% for one turn, deals damage to one enemy. Deals extra damage to the Saber class enemies, and that's her overcharge effect. And the MP damage it, at level 1 is uh, 1600, and then when it's at level 5, it's 2400. Um, in the charge effect at level 1, it's 150% extra bonus damage against Saber class and its servants, and then at 500% overcharge is 200% if you ever get it that way. <laughs> And yeah, that's Mysterious Heroine X. Now, here's the thing with her. 
she's very, very niche. Because obviously, if you're fighting against a good alignment Saber class unit, she's gonna destroy them. Like, these are all the ones, if you're fighting Saber, Young Saber, uh, Gil, Gils the Reyes, Saber specifically, Rama, Lancelot, Gawain, Gawain, Betty, Arthur but a man, Saber but a man, excuse me, use the wrong name, Langling, Be um, not Betty, Benny Enma, Lakashmima, Jason, Karna, the Trung Sisters, Charlemagne, Roland, Kaisuke, and then over here if we go down to the other ones, which is Neutral Good, you have uh, Sigurd, you have Tamo, you have Watsuna, and then down even further you have the Chaotic Good, which is Nero, Sig- is it really Sigurd is Chaotic Good? Uh, Altera, <laughs> Liz, uh, Musashi, uh, Hakusai, Astolfo, uh, Ibuki, Lady Gawain, and yeah, that's basically it. If you're ever fighting any of them, she'll do a buttload of damage to them for sure. If you're fighting them, <laughs> and if you're fighting anything that is good aligned and a Saber class, uh, servant, you're gonna be pretty good off if there's any in the future. Uh, but here's the main issue, which has always been kind of an issue, and it's an issue that all Berserkers share. It's not unique to her. It's the fact that this healing doesn't matter if you're dead, which is what happens to most Berserkers in any hard content anything. <laughs> Unless they have guts. That's why the best Berserkers typically have guts, or they have a way to make it so that they don't instantly die. Um... Like, because the thing, the, the problem with a lot of them is that they get one crit and then they're basically dead. So, that's why a lot of people were telling me that when I said, I'm not sure how good Kualter is still. They said, like, no, he's actually still very good because he's able to dodge, he has guts, and he has a chance to bring down the crit rate of the enemy, which is very key when you're a berserker and you can die to a single crit, thus invalidating the entire battle that you've been having up until that point, because it literally doesn't matter if you get crit and you're playing a berserker. So that's always going to be her problem. It's a shame because I feel like she's right on the cusp of being really good to be fighting against a very specific type of enemy. But the problem is always going to be but that as long as she doesn't have guts, you're always going to run into the issue of potentially dying to a single hit, and that's kind of a problem when you are a single target servant, and for the vast majority of the time, single target servants are used in more hard kind of fights, because that's where they typically shine the best. And it kind of sucks to have <laughs> Mysterious Heroine X alter. She's super ready, she's ready to fight, and then just to get soloed by a single lucky crit by the enemy. It's just no fun, and you can't, again, you can't heal if you're already dead. Which is kind of the issue with her, <laughs> is that she's already dead by the time any of the healing kind of matters. Which is a shame. Um... She's real close though, and she looks real nice. I always have been a big fan. I don't regret pulling for her and having her and using her when I can, but this is just the true facts of her. You should not be summoning uh, for her unless you are a huge fan of Mysterious Halloween X Alter. She's not someone who you're just gonna go like, oh, I'm just about to fucking wreck shop for most of these events. That's not really how she's built, it's not really what she does. But she can still be fine to use if you're specifically building a team around her and you're doing stuff, so, you know. It also doesn't help that I think it would have been a little bit better off if she was maybe Arts. Because Castoria has plenty of ways to defend a Berserker. Scotty really doesn't. <laughs> she has her Noble Phantasm, which is not good. <laughs> it's not a good noble phantasm whatsoever it's maybe one of the worst ones out there i think in my opinion just because it's so ineffective and it just doesn't provide very much it provides an evade but it's just not a very good one and you i've and this comes from someone who's used scotty a whole bunch i've never liked using her noble phantasm i think it's actively bad which is a shame because it, it wasn't an issue when she first released but it definitely is an issue now that she's not the best at what she does anymore <laughs> 
But anyway, I digress. So those are the two units. Again, no unit that's so super crazy you have to jump out and go summon for right now, unless you are a big fan of them, in which case you've already done so, and I wish you the best at actually getting them. But there are two other units, which I feel like I have to talk about. Three, four, technically, five if you count. Okay, there's five more. All right, let's go. Very quickly, Ushiwakamaru, who is on every single banner. She's Ushiwakamaru. She has a free idol costume. Get her. Done. Done dealio. Done dealio. Boom, boom, boom. Next, we have Nero, who is actually story locked. Uh, this is important because she's a limited unit who's even more limited unit. This is basically the... Story locked is like limited, but limited times two. Because <laughs> they show up even less. And it especially sucks when it's a four star, like Nero here. That makes him extremely hard to get. So, if you're a fan of Nero, I would say it's a shame that she's not going to be on raid up. So, I actually don't. I think your best bet is typically you have to wait for a four star ticket, which I don't think is coming in at least for another year or so. Um. It's more of a bonus if you do get her, but if you're specifically going for her, the way that the banners are structured now, she would be sharing the banner with uh, Cat over here, Tomomo Cat, and that's going to be a real issue that if you do get a 4-star, it's a, you got a 50-50 chance if it's featured that it's either going to be the Cat or Nero. And just based off of luck stats, it's not the greatest. I wish there was, I, I wish the rates weren't as bad for 4-stars as they were. They should really be increased at some point. But unfortunately, we can't do anything about that here until it gets better on the JP version of the game. That's just the way it is. But anyway, I think Nero's cool. I like using Nero. I've been using her for the event. So if you get her, it's a good shot. Unfortunately, there's just no easy way to guarantee it. And then the other unit on this side is Tamamoket, who is not limited in any way and is pretty good for a very quick and dirty, I just need to slap somebody with a quick... Uh, and Noble Phantasm and just grind it out and that's very useful for that. Um, she has her skills that are specific that make it so she, she gets uh, self debuff immunity for a single turn so she doesn't get hurt by the stun. In terms of looping it's absolutely terrible. She's terrible at it but if you only just need to kill one thing you're pretty good off here just using uh, Tamamo Cat for the, your one off and being done with it. At least that's how I find. I've, I've always been a big fan of Cat, and her animations are also very nice. Now let's talk about the other two units. Uh, one of them is Altera. There's nothing I sh there. I don't want to go over these. And I, I, she's a free unit. You shouldn't be summoning. You should not be summoning. She's not limited. She's about to. If you're a big fan of Altera, just wait. Literally just wait, because in the anniversary we're getting a free pick a pick a SSR, <laughs> and she's on that. You can just get her that way, and you'll save yourself a whole lot of trouble than just summoning for Altera. And I say this as someone who's a big fan of Altera. She was my first five star. She's my she's Bond ten. I've used her any which way I can. I think she's awesome. I think she's a little bit underrated by some people just because she's not Saber, which is Saber is the best. Which, to be honest, if you're someone who's looking in a pure who is the best uh, Saber who is free that anyone can get, that it means not limited. I should stop saying free because they're not free. But basically, they're not limited and they're in every banner. The answer is Saber by like a long shot. But I think Altera is still pretty cool, and I always have been a big fan of her. She has some neat stuff, as you can see here. This this one skill of hers has been buffed three times, which is always the sign of a good unit. <laughs> but this is what this guy, this skill right here, has never been buffed. This one had to be buffed, though, man. This one was not very good. But anyway. I, you should not be summoning for Altera. I'm going to put my foot down on this one. If you're a big fan of her, literally just wait for the anniversary and get her with a free ticket. If there's two units, if you're somehow in a situation where there are two units you really badly want with the SSR ticket selection, and the other one isn't getting a featured unit, uh, a B isn't a featured unit on a banner anytime soon, and you have so much money to burn, you don't mind spending it on a non-limited unit, then go ahead, live your truth, go for it. Only under those circumstances, otherwise, literally just wait. Don't, don't summon. <laughs> I really don't like telling people not to summon, but she's literally having, she's, uh, there's very soon, if you're just a huge fan of her, you'll just be able to pick her up, and then you don't have to waste your say quartz. And you don't have to deal with the headache that I dealt with because I'm an idiot. When I summoned for Quetz and I did not get Quetz and I just wasted all my St. Quartz. When the answer was, I, I should have just waited. I should have just waited. That would have been the smart thing. 
But sometimes, love makes you do stupid things. So anyway, speaking of love, Queen Maeve, she's here. And it's another unit that's been buffed like 27 fucking times. Active skill, well first of all, let me look here. She's a writer. She's a one quick, two arts, two buster. Her first skill is Queen's Rule Body A, which turns into Queen Substance after her strengthening. Uh, grants self debuff immunity for three turns. Recovers own HP for every turn. Ev recovers own HP every turn for three turns. Charges own MP gauge by 10% every turn for three turns. Charges the MP gauge of male or fey allies. And that's by 30%. Um, male or phase get a charge of 30% and the HP regen is 1000. Her second skill, which is Charisma B, which turns into Discipline of the Queen A, increases uh, party's attack for 3 turns, further increases the attack of male allies for 3 turns, recovers on HP, 20% attack up, 20% to males, and 2000 heals on a cooldown of 5. And then third skill is Siren Song C, which turns into My Red Mead C uh, after an interlude. Uh, chance to charm one male enemy for one turn reduces the enemy's defense for one turn. The male chance of charming is at 80% and the defense down is by 30. In the past it was literally just a charm. Passive skill is magic resistance B and writing A. Her pen skill for the third one is an anti-lancer, which is an increase of attack against lancers. Her noble phantasm goes from B to B+. Chariot, my love, my dear iron chariot, deals damage to one enemy. Five hits, uh, Buster deals damage eight, eight, uh, eight hundred percent at level one, and at level five it's twelve thousand. And then her overcharge effect is it deals extra damage to the male enemies, reduces their mental debuff resistance for three turns. The mental debuffs are sleeping, any of these charm, anything that stun, anything like that they'll be more susceptible to it. And it's <laughs> the bonus damage is hundred and fifty percent. And the D-Vrise resistance is 20% at charge level 1, and if you get it all the way to the final charge, it's 200% bonus damage, and the debuff resistance is 60%. And that's Maeve. Uh, similar to Mysterious Heroine X Alter, she has a very specific niche. The only difference is that her niche is much wider. Like, yeah. <laughs> extra damage to male enemies. Not servants, just anyone who is male. <laughs> They'll take an extra damage. And it's like, yeah, these dudes, any of these dudes, <laughs> and you'll instantly beat them. In terms of, uh, let's see, go here, yep, male, I can't see the enemy male, but there's plenty of, there's like buttloads of anything that is a man, Maeve quick, quickly destroys. So she has a much wider range of things she can completely destroy, which is nice. The reducing of their mental debuff resistance as well goes nice with their charm. There's specific uh, male enemies that you could probably definitely put into a charm lock with the right team if you know what you're doing. I don't know if you could actually do it here because their cooldown is 7, but it's still pretty nice. It's probably why is it 7? Why is it so goddamn high? It's just 80% and 30%, uh, you know. Yeah, they could probably buff that again, but either way. They've had to buff her a whole bunch because when she released, she wasn't the greatest. But I think she's a pretty solid unit now, especially with this, with the ability to charge NPs for male or fey, fey enemy, or uh, male or fey allies. I think is really nice. Um, obviously, with the upcoming Lost Belt, there's a lot of fey dudes coming up, and there's plenty of males that you can use as well. And then this also makes her a kind of weird pseudo support for some males. You can definitely make up some silly team comps with her in there. If you know for a fact she's going to be there with any dude, you can easily just get a free 30% MP charger, which is pretty nice. Um, that also means that if you're not with either one of those, it just makes it so that she just doesn't buff any of them. But it's fine. For the most part, you have to think of, think that stuff ahead and you should be able to do it. But yeah, I like Maeve. She also has like a buttload of costumes. Here she is for Summer, and then here she is for Idol, I think. Yeah, that's her Idol. This is her April Fools where she's just got the giant puffy coat. Giant puffy coat's pretty cool. This is her in the dominate. Oh, hopefully you've seen him. Nope. Did you see the puffy coat? Nope, that's her in her sex cabbage. Not cabbage, for carriage. There we go. There's the coat. 
And yeah, that's it. Those are the units. She's also, as I've said before, she's story locked, which is limited with extra steps. So if you're a big fan of Maeve over here, this is your best chance of doing it. Which is there are big fans of Maeve. My brother's one of them for sure. So they exist. He got her on day one. He's perfectly fine. He's locked down. Easy. But I also think she's also in the upcoming ticket for five stars. If I'm, I think it includes story locks because Quetz is on it, so therefore she's on it as well. So this really is a banner of you shouldn't summon on this banner because there's already an anniversary coming up where both of them are going to be on it. Let me look. Here we go. We can go here just to be double sure on this one. I was like. Other campaigns. Yeah, she's totally on there. <laughs> so literally, there's no reason to summon for either one of them. We know that they're coming. <laughs> so good to look for. I can't. I until I. Saw, I thought she was actually legit limited. I forgot she was story limited. So, so there you go. This is basically a banner of don't summon unless you badly want Nero and you don't want to wait for the select a four star ticket. And even then, I would say probably it's best to wait. So yeah, those are the banners coming up. I wish you the best of luck if you do end up summoning. Feel free to tell me how you did, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Get back to grinding. I need to go get my idle stuff on. Holy shit, this video is almost 30 minutes long. Thank you very much. Leave a like, do a comment. Thank you. Bye-bye.